Hey, you there? It's Mike. Oh. I, I don't have reach to talk back right now. Oh.
Good evening and welcome. Game number one of the 2017-2018 season. Rob Brooks, Mike Tuberosa, Mike Drexel in Bowling Green, year two of Zach Spiker's program. We've been waiting for this for a little bit now. Yeah, it's going to be more like Zach Spiker's team right now. And one of the big things we're going to see this year is hopefully more development from Kirk Lee. Kirk Lee, obviously going to be a big part of this offense. Had a shot at Rookie of the Year last year, didn't make it, but he does a lot of great things with the basketball. Yeah, Kirk can do a little of everything. He shot 40%, averaged almost 50 in a game, broke the freshman record for both points and assists here. And that's pretty amazing when you're in the same company with Mike Landerson, Marley Bros, John Rankin, and guys like that. So we're look, really looking forward to what Kirk can do this year. Hopefully with a little more help, looks like it could be a deeper team. This year. Uh, you talk about a little bit more help. One of the people that he could be looking at for some of that help is uh, one of your favorites, a senior from the Boston area, Sammy Mojica. Yeah, Sammy Mojica, he's kind of been through everything. He was here during some of the good days early when here with the rebuilding now. And he's one of the names you kind of forget when you talk about players in this team. And I think Sammy, he obviously has the potential to score. He has the potential to do a little of everything, but he's gonna have to be a lot more consistent this year if the Dragons are gonna go places in the CA. You talk about consistency. Sammy has had games where he's absolutely lit it up and there are other games where he was invisible. He's really got to find the middle ground between those two. Yeah, and I think one of the big things with Sammy, he brings energy. And when he has the good body language and brings that positive energy, this is a much better team. When he gets down on himself after missing a couple shots and making a couple turnovers, it's a little tougher. And that's not the Sammy we want to see in his senior year. Uh, you mentioned body language. That's one of the things that Coach Spiker is talking about with his team. He wants to see better body language from his team. Well, you know what? We're going to have the tip-off coming in a few minutes. We're going to get to see exactly what kind of body language they have and what kind of team chemistry they have as well as the 17-18 season begins right here on Drexel Dragons TV. Home is more than a place. It's a feeling. It's pushing yourself to the top of the hill before your morning commute. It's the lure of your secret fishing spot. It's having a big team meeting after a game at the office. At Independent Blue Cross, we know the feeling because your hometown is our hometown too for nearly 80 years. Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Drexel is the modern American research university. We do translational research, we do cooperative education, we do urban extension. The place is just bursting with opportunity and as a result, it's a very, very special place full of great people who are doing amazing, amazing things. And the ethos of Drexel to learn by doing is really 100% compatible with what a comprehensive research university is and has to be. That experiential learning is essential and really differentiates our students. Sports side as we prepare you for the Dragons and the Bowling Green Falcons. And Jeff Bash, the PA announcer here at the deck, is introducing the starting lineup for today's game. So he's got a few children to take at home while he's going to be out there today to start this one. And we're still glad to start around the chance first for the Bowling Green Falcons. Coming all the way in from Ohio, making their first appearance ever here at the deck. Our forward, number one, Demazio Wiggins, he's a senior. Joining him up front, number 40, Derek Hope. K-O-C-H for pronounced Coke. They're going with a three-guard offense tonight. It's Roderick Caldwell wearing number three. Dylan Fry, one of the top freshmen in the MAC last season. And Justin Turner is a freshman wearing number 10. He is the other guard. For the Dragons, a few changes in the lineup tonight. Uh, obviously, it's opening night, so you didn't really know who was coming in. But we can tell you that the Dragons will be without Miles Overton tonight. He is out with a strained pass. The Dragons will also be without Tremaine Isabel, who failed to meet a team standard, so he will be missing tonight's game. The starters for the Dragons up front, Austin Williams, the senior, looking for a big season for Austin in his last go around in University City. Dragons going with the four guard offense. Sam Green's gonna play the four, he's wearing number four. 
Sammy Mojica back for his last season. Or number 15, he'll be at one of the guard spots. Troy Harper, the transfer from Campbell from local Newman Garetti High School, wearing number three in his first game tonight. And it's point guard, the man we talked about in the pregame, Kirk Lee. So that is your starting lineup for the 2017-18 opener. And I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a pretty bold move by Coach Spiker. He talks about process and he talks about philosophy and to take a guy, Tremaine Isabel, who failed to live up to team standards and say, you know what, first game of the season, we're going to do without you. We can do without you if you don't want to follow along with the program. That's a bold move, and I'm glad to see coaches putting the, the process and the team above any one, any one individual in this team at this time right now. Yeah, what I'm hoping is, um, you know, you, you see this a lot, where guys go down and they, everyone says the next man up. Well, it's not always that easy. But this is one of those games where, you know what, Troy Hopper, he can handle it. Sam Green showed at the end of last year he can play. And I think this would be a good statement for the team saying, hey, you know what, we're all right. And we're going to win. And then Tremaine's going to come back and we're only going to be better for it. And Miles will be back and all of a sudden we'll have all those guards that everybody talked about in the preseason. They're not really here tonight. <laughs> but... The Dragons are going to be deep when they're healthy, and uh, it'll be interesting. Year two, a little more of um, the Zach Spiker era, more of his players, and we're ready to go, Rob. And just like that, Austin Williams gets the ball on the way up. Stretch, a little enthusiastic to get the season started. We'll try it again. And it's controlled by Bowling Green. And we are underway here at the deck. The season has begun. Caldwell, back up top to Coke. Coke lobs it down low. Good defense by Stretch. And double team, so he throws it up top into the corner. The shot is no good. Weak side rebound, Mojica there to help. And now Kirk Lee gets his first touch of the season, drops it off to Mojica. He'll go down to the block. And it's out of bounds off of Drexler. And a turnover by Sammy. He tried to go baseline and find someone inside. There was just no room. Pretty good defense by the Falcons. Wearing a, a uniquely brown. Oh, it's a very tonight. Cleveland brown. Brown, I would say. Not the prettiest. They had the bright orange jumpers and the brown unis. Justin Turner with a traveling violation. Dragons will take the ball out. Hopper will throw it in. Interested to see Troy Hopper. We got to see him in a couple of scrimmages and a couple of exhibitions in a scrimmage and Troy can really get to the basket. I tell you what, he has a way of ducking between defenders. It'll be fun to see in the CAA. And he went by Nova defenders who were some of the best around. He was impressive in that game. Didn't score a ton of points, but was able to get to the rim. Kick it out right for Harper. He drives up and under. No good. Coke with the rebound. And it's Fry. Holding. Kick ball by Sam Green. And they Possession will stay with Bowling Green. Season kind of got here quick. I believe it. Believe you me. But all of a sudden, it happened. And they had the exhibitions and the scrimmages, and boom, open night. Fry. Down low to Wiggins. Wiggins cross court. The shot is up and no good. I know we're only a minute 15 in, Robert. We've already seen much better defense than we had in the past. Lee down to Green on the right block. He kicks it out. Cook from the elbow. No good. Austin Williams with a rebound, the putback rolls around and in. And the Dragons are on the board first here. It's 2-0. Rebounding is a huge key to this team. And now an offensive foul. Looks like they're going to get Roderick Caldwell for the foul. Caldwell, the sophomore from Dayton, Ohio. Well, one thing I was saying, Rob, rebounding and defense are two things that the Dragons would not re do really well last year. And that's two of the things Coach is always talking to me about. Like, we've got to be a better defensive team, or we've got to rebound better. And so far, I mean, I know we're a minute 45 in, but positive signs early. Harp, back to Mojica. Now the drop off to Lee. Lee behind his back. Now he's going to bring it back out. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Sam, cross court to Kirk. Now Sammy, five seconds on the shot clock. Austin, the handoff to Green, Green, the pass to Mojica, the shot, it's up and no good, but he got it off before the clock expired. Probably not the best clock awareness by the Dragons there. Great spin move by Turner, he drops it off to the dunk by Wiggins. That was good offense right there by the Falcons. Great individual effort there. 
by Justin Turner. We're going to see Jarvis Doles come into the game pretty early tonight. Rotation will be a little bit different than what we imagined it would be due to an injury. Great Austin pass. takes the great feed. He's fouled. The bucket is good. Wow. Really impressed right there with the pass. I mean, you don't think of Sam Green being a great distributor, but he, he found Austin on the cut to the hoop, and Austin's got four already. I'll tell you what, Greeny looks really good. Like, just his physical shape, his demeanor. Uh, it looks like whatever they said to him before the offseason last year, he took it to heart and has gone to work on it. Stretch at the free throw line makes it. You're right about that. We were talking about that at, at the uh, exhibition game, that he is the one guy that you notice that really got a lot more in game shape. Dragons pressuring a little bit. The shot is airballed, rebounded by Coke all out of bounds off of Coke. Justin Turner getting some, some encouragement from his teammates after he sailed that one. With three minutes in, the Dragons with a three-point lead, five to two. Harp, as they call him, Troy Harper Jr. to Mohica, now Doles in the game for the first time. In the Dragon uniform for the first time. Mohica in the lane, the right-handed shot is banked home and good. You'd be happy with that if you're Coach Spiker. Ah, uh, not happy with that, that though right there as Justin Turner beats the defense down the floor at 7-4. That was a problem last year, stopping that transition, even after a make. Mojica around the screen, drives, just comes up short, and Coke gets the rebound. Good move, but not a, not a great finish there for Sammy. Turner's going to jack up another three. This one's good. Fouls going to be on the floor, Rob. See how you get that on. Looks like Coke. Wasn't sure which side I was looking from. I wasn't sure it was 0 4 4 0. Wiggins goes to the bench for Bowling Green as they drag him pin down the ball. Bowling Green's doing a pretty good job getting right in Kirk Lee's face immediately. Not let him get open. Drop it down to Austin on the off the right block. The back is way in, turns baseline, kicks it out for Harp. Harp's gonna shoot the three. No good. Good rebound yeah. by Doles. Saves it to Mojica. Mojica was to drive it and offensive foul. Ooh. Good effort there. I don't think that's one of those that anyone's going to be too upset with. Sammy going right to the bucket. That right there is going to take us to our first media timeout. 15-49 remaining here in the first half. It's Drexel 7 and Bowling Green 7. You're watching Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. in the first half, Drexel and the Bowling Green Falcons to start the season. And two so far, we've seen some very good, a little bit of bad, but 
you know, a good way to shake off the jitters here at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Spiker has to be happy with the effort right away. And um, obviously he'd like to make a couple more shots and maybe make a few more stops, but so far so good for the Dragons. We're tied up in the early going. Fly to the corner, Turner's gonna drive it into the lane and miss. Mm. Fouled on the floor before the shot. Foul go on Sam Green. Number one on Sam, two on the team. Caldwell to begin the inbounds play. Lobs it over the top. Dragons man up. Switch to Turner. Turner drives all the way through. Now kicks it out to Fry. Five seconds on the shot clock and a turnover. The Dragon defense holds strong, Tubes. Yeah, that won't count as a steal for the defensive team. And you look at it and you think, yeah, maybe Fry just dropped the ball there. But Austin Williams did a really nice job. He took, he was trying to be taken off the dribble from the right wing here, went all the way underneath, stayed with his guy, and forced a pass as opposed to a layup. Austin, Austin looks a little, uh, he looks ready, doesn't he? He looks a little playerish right now. It looks like he wants it. Look at that post up right there. And like no hesitation into the paint. The hook is strong and good. I mean, just look at the difference. You remember, I think most Dragons fans remember Austin kind of taking second fiddle to Rodney with last some, year. With some very timid hook shots. Not there. When he decided to fire one up. And he made his shots, he just didn't take many of them. Turner from the left wing, he pulls up, misses. Travis Doles with the rebound. The freshman from Baltimore, he's 6'9", 215. Hark into the lane, bounced off the body and butted on the rim, no good. Now I'm gonna give you a stat on Harper. Now I don't know if this is fake news or if this is real, but, but I'm gonna go real because it came from our coach. He told me that when he was recruiting Troy Harper, you know, to come back, because obviously Troy decided to leave Campbell, he said one of the big reasons he was so interested in Troy is Troy went to the foul line more times per minute than any player in the country. Now, I don't know how he figured that out. I, don't, <laughs> I know he's an analytic guy, but if you look at the numbers and you go back and you look at Campbell, the last season Troy was there, he went to the line a ridiculous amount of times. Like we're talking over 150, and that's one of the things right you see here. People can't cover him going to the basket. Oh, that's great, as long as he's making his free throws. He's gonna put up some numbers here. The second one is in and out, and now a foul on Jarvis Doles going over the back. But I think one of the reasons that's so important, I mean, obviously, it's always good to go to the free throw line, but even more going to the free throw line, I think with what Coach Spiker's trying to do here with three-point shooters, if you can get Troy and Tremaine and Kirk all to go to the basket, you're gonna have some open shots, or you're gonna have some layups. Rise picks it up, drops it off to Nelly Cummings. Cummings out to the corner for Turner. He shoots the bomb and makes it. Boom. 10-10. He's, keep, he's keeping them in the game. He's got eight. Mm. Seems to me that he probably shoots first thing in the morning before he brushes his teeth. <laughs> yeah. he, he looks like he likes doing that, and he's pretty good at it. Stretch across the top to Green. Green out to Doles. Doles from long distance, no good. Here comes Fry. 13-42 remaining here in the first half. And they're going to get Troy Harper Jr. not moving his feet. Yeah, he wasn't happy with that call, but that was a good call. No. And we're going to see, uh, you want to try his name or you want me to? The newest addition to the Dragons checking in alongside San Mojica. Taras Kararinas. Correct. Coach has been practicing that and really like drilling that down. He's got everybody saying Taras Kararinas. I don't know if I can say it with quite the... You gotta roll your R's, homie. Yeah, Didn't you study Spanish? Is that, is that, he's from Lithuania, he's not I from know, Spain. But still, you gotta roll your R's. Shot is up and good. Ooh, another three. Long distance from Daquan Flouden. Back to back threes and... Lay around the screen from Katarinas. Bounce pass to Harp, he's gonna drive along the baseline, it's blocked. Wiggins. And Lee causes a travel. He is always, always, always going for the steal. What a pest he is if he's turned the other team. And, and he's so quick he can get back. Hmm. Harp comes out of the game. Mojica, Lee, Cadavinas, Doles, and Green of the Drexel Five. Green to bring it in. Goes it to Tadas. Tadas pass almost stolen. Doles gets it. Has it taken away from him now by Turner. Turner, 
ahead. That's another turnover, though, caused by Kirk Lee. Kirk, had, in a way, just enough that he had to throw it, you don't hear this often, over Kirk. <laughs> and it was just a little too far, and the Dragons get the ball back. You're going to hear calliope music in a minute. <laughs> yeah, that was not, uh, not pretty. So we're going to screen, yep. Sam Green. I think that's two on Sam. Got to hold that screen a little longer. Watch the uh, new NCAA rules tape with Coach Spiker a couple weeks ago. One of the things they're really cracking down on is when you have a screen, you got to give them space and you got to hold it. And then you, the other thing is it can't be wider than your body. So you can't stick your right leg out. It has to be hip. You got to stay within your within your shoulder yeah, frame. You know, you know how you used to set that pick like you were a lineman down low? Whoa, whoa by Kirk Lee. He took that one in the chest. Spin move in the lane. Yo, Mojica. Probably goaltending, but we'll count it. Yeah. Wiggins, cross court. Shot, no good. Long rebound. Fly with another attempt from three. This one is no good. Tipped up, caught down by Wiggins. Doesn't finish, but he's going to go to the line and shoot two. Well, we were talking about the rebound earlier, and that was not what Coach Spiker wanted to see there. Two offensive boards. One led to a wide open three, and the other one led to the second foul on Jarvis Doles. Last year, DiMaggio Wiggins was their third leading scorer, shot 61% from the free throw line. Average 10 a game. He's up on his toes, and that one's good. Fourteen, twelve. Makes them both. Fifteen. Good crowd here tonight, Rob. Students really came out. Student section's almost full. It's good to see you. everybody supporting the team. It's the beginning of a new year. Goal to Mojica. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. Goals from the corner. It's good. Three-point bomb. When you see Jarvis Doles, you don't think he could be a three-pointer, three-point shooter because he's too big. But he has a really nice stroke. Well, I mean, if you look at the types of players, and we have a foul on the floor here, if you look at the types of player that Coach Spiker is recruiting, it seems that he likes long, tall shooters. Not so much big men, but offensive players, wing players who can shoot the three. We had a timeout on the floor, 11 minutes, 50 seconds remaining. It's tied at 15 apiece, Drexel and Bowling Green. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. People are always asking, Coach, how do you stay so healthy? My answer is simple. I invest in my health. I exercise, I remain active, and I eat healthy. After years as a coach, and now in business, it just comes naturally. Of course, it helps to know that Independence Blue Cross has had my back for over 30 years. With that kind of security, it's easy to age fairly. See what Independence can do for you. For more information, visit ibxmedicare.com. I'm Bobby Broyles along with Rob Washburn. The Bowling Green Falcons walking across the Dragon on the Sam Cozen court here at the deck. Opening day of the 17-18 season. And it's we are tied at 15. Dylan Fry is going to be at the line. He's going to shoot the one and one here. 
in Fry last year, 41, sorry, 31 for 44 from the free throw line, that's 70%. The right hander, first one is no good, and Mojica gets the rebound. Two, we talked about Sammy in the open, and the energy that he brings, you saw it there, foul on the floor. Yeah, he's a guy you really root for. I mean, we've known him, obviously, we've known him four years now, and you get kind of, you get kind of close to these guys. And you know, Sammy's been through a lot. He was here for the uh, obviously the old regime, trying to switch over the new regime. Had, I mean, Sammy's family's from Puerto Rico, and obviously we all know what is going on down there. So, not an easy time for him. But we had 48 days without power and light for most people on the yeah, island. He said his family has power. I asked him that the other day, which is good. Austin Williams down low, kicks it out to Sammy. Sammy pull up, good. Right on cue. Sammy gives the Drexel Dragons the lead. Cummings to Turner, Turner. Fox now back to Cummings. Now on the screen into the lane. Drops it off for Wiggins. Wiggins fouled from behind Ooh. by Doles. Jarvis did not have good position, but it did look clean, and unfortunately, it wasn't called clean, and Jarvis has three, so he'll be taking a seat for the rest of the first half, most likely. You know, at, at that position, the Dragons are limited in terms of big men. Yes, they are. I think they can get small in a hurry. Maggio Wiggins, a deep breath. He stands at the free throw line, 17-15 will score, it's good. Coke back into the game. It's really strange when you come out, you know, the start of a year is always obviously unique, but there's a lot of different faces in the lineup right away this year. Like I was, I was not expecting Jarvis Dulles to have three fouls this early in the game, and I didn't even know if he'd be in this early in the season. Yeah, I mean, you just don't know, and... You know, things happen. I mean, it really hurts with, you know, Miles out and Tremaine being out tonight. You figured a lot of guys are going to have to play. Which is kind of fun, though. You know, Kirk saves it, and it's an over and back violation. And that's actually a good call because Kirk went over the back before to save it. And the ball did bounce on the Dragons end. Good call by the referees. Good to see you giving credit to the hardworking referees who come out and work our game. Well, all summer I hear how bad umpires are, so I figure. Just trying to provide a little balance. <laughs> our good friend Larry, no friend of the umpires. Bowling Green has the rock. Coke, well beyond the arc. And a pass left to Turner. Turner still has his dribble, doesn't use it. Pass to Caldwell. Caldwell right. Drops it off for Fox. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Pass is almost stolen. The shot is up and good. Dragons pretty good defense there. As the shot clock wound down, but just enough room to get that three off. Dragons bound the hole by three. Matt Fox took 110 shots last year. 88 of them were from deep. One dimensional, is that what you're saying? Just a hair. Katarinas to the back. elbow. Harp fakes, drives, blocks. And that will go against the Maggio Wiggins. Hmm. I don't Harper didn't see Sammy wide open in the corner right there, but instead he gets the basket and he's back at the line for the third and fourth time today. So Hart makes it 20 to 18 with that free throw. In his first game as a dragon, he's up to two points. Also has two fouls. Knocks that one down to cut the lead to 20 to 19. Nine forty-seven to go here. 
Dragons down a point. Bowling Green with the ball. Caldwell step back. No good. Off the floor, Mojica. To Katadinas. Good now decision. Kirkley will set it up. Cross court to Mojica. Going to go high in the air there. Sammy on the floor to the baseline. Leaner, no good. Good put back by Austin Williams, though. Good take by Sammy to get the help to come over, and Austin just comes in on the weak side for another bucket. He's already up to nine points. Caldwell. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Turner back to Caldwell. His shot from deep. Long off the back iron, but run down by Fox. Yeah, look at Sammy Huskin getting on the floor. Kirk Lee loses control of it. Oh. And there's Kirk hustling again, and it's going to be Drexel basketball. I'll tell you what, Lee and Harper both really aggressive on the off in the offensive end playing D, and Dragons get the ball back. That's all that Coach Spiker wants is hustle. I mean, that's the stuff that, you know, there, there are only certain things you can control. You can't control if you make shots, but you can control your effort. And that's a really good effort right there by the Dragons. It's fun to see when guys are diving on the floor, isn't it? Just, yeah. Just feel better about your squad when you see guys that want it. Harp. Taking it to the rim, no good. Tip back by Austin Williams. Stretch! Nice half for stretch so far. 11 points, three boards, and got four of those points in the offensive end with putbacks. The drive by Coke blocked and held ball. Now in the alternate possession, it's gonna go Drexel's way. Now you're gonna see that happened. You got a rookie in there. Got burnt going baseline, but good help by Stretch. And then the two of them tie it up, and Dragons get the ball up three. We had talked earlier, you know, in the exhibitions and the scrimmages, that I really think Austin Williams has a chance to be one of the best big men in the league, and that's saying something because the, the league has a lot of good big guys this year. Usually it's really guard oriented, but this year there's pretty much a big man on all the good teams. There's going to be a foul there on Coke as I was yapping. We got a timeout on the floor with 7.59 remaining here. The Dragons are up three. We'll take a break as well. We'll be back in just a moment. You're watching Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. It's having a big team meeting after a day at the office. At Independent Blue Cross, we know the feeling because your hometown is our hometown too. For nearly 80 years, Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Back at the deck, the Dragons with a three-point lead, 7.59 remaining here in the first half of action. Rob Brooks here, my two girls to my right. Happy to be with you to start another season of Drexel basketball, the second year of the Zach Spiker era here at Drexel University. Dragons off to a good start, up 23-20. 
Austin Williams going to the free throw line as we come back to action here. Taras Cararinas, Sammy Mojica, Kirk Lee, and Troy Harper Jr. on the floor along with Stretch. Stretch puts the first one in the air and no good. Caldwell, back to Cummings. Cummings with a lot of dribbling, gets into the paint, throws it up at the rim, no good. Mojica with a rebound. He really did just throw that up. And now the steal. Caldwell has it off the right block. Out to Plowden. His three is no good. Cararinas there for Drexel. Taught us a late add to the squad. Didn't get signed until almost September. Out of Finley Prep in Nevada, right outside of Las Vegas. Wow. Really good high school team. Spin move by Stretch. Now the shot, no good. And he's going to be fouled in the act. This doesn't look like the Stretch that we're used to seeing. He is so aggressive and wants the ball. It's really good to see. He's aggressive. He looks aggressive. Aggressive. He looks confident. There's a lot to like about what Stretch has got going on on the floor right now. First one of two is no good. He even hit a couple free throws. Oh. You want everything, don't you? <laughs> Next one is up and good from stretch. One of two from that trip. So Dragon's lead is now four. Plowden, the drive, take. Good. Twenty-four, twenty-two. Got to thank our friends at Amtrak for helping to sponsor today's game and every game this season. Drexel Dragons, and Learfield Sports. Amtrak, fastest and the easiest way to New York City or anywhere else along the Northeast Corridor. Troy Harper. Down the left side of the lane, banks it, put back by Stretch. Oh, he is having a beastly first half right now. That's almost like they're running a play. Okay, Troy, go up there, draw two people, just throw it off the backboard. Austin will come clean it up. Remember a couple years ago, that was almost Towson's offense. Oh, yeah, I think it was Towson's <laughs> offense. Just put it on the rim and somebody will go get it and put that's it down. And that's not knocking him because they were really good at it. Turner, no Ooh. good, but he's fouled. That's a cheapie in Austin. Kind of caught him reaching. We're about to go to line. We'd also like to thank Academy Bus. I'll tell you what, we see a lot of Academy Bus over the course of the seasons. They drive us all up and down the East Coast. Absolutely. Usually really late at night on 95 heading home. Guys really take care of us. So uh, what, is, what is it, 80, 81 in uh, Virginia? Uh, yeah, 81. Your favorite Turner, first one. Yeah. No good. 81, 66, all those lovely ride down to James Madison. Schedule favors the Dragons this year in that Turner's next one is good. Uh, a lot of the hard travel is on the weekend this year. Yeah, that's and actually we, nice. We get the North Carolina trip out of the way early over the holidays. And then the rest of the hard travel is passes stolen. Picked off by Plowden. He'll go in for the dunk with authority. We got a timeout on the floor. I think there's a bowling green fans right behind the Drexel bench going crazy. After that, Don, good play by, oh, good, good aggressive defense right there by the Falcons, and again, taking advantage of maybe the freshman not being overly strong with the ball, kind of a weak pass picked off, and, and then a really, really strong dunk. I mean, that rim might be shaking for another two, three days. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't want to shoot down that end if I was, if I was anybody else. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's one of those things, though, you just... You can't get it picked right there. And, you know, you get that ball picked at half court, and they go down for an easy dunk, get some momentum to lead down to one. Yeah, that's like that's like the pick six in football. Yep, yeah. exactly. You, you, you get the touchback, first and ten, throw a little five yard out, pick six. Like really, we just oh, gave yeah. that away, huh? Yep. No, yep, absolutely. Did I talk your other language? You know, being the football guy you are, stats maven that you are. Yeah. To say yeah, it's the build that looks so footballish, right? Ty Miles in the game for the first time. 
Ty brings a big body to the floor. Lee from three, it's no good. Plowden taps it. Green can't control it and drops it over the end line. He got the offensive board, but just couldn't control it. You know, we said that Sam Green looks like he's in good shape. I'll tell you what, I, I know Ty struggled in the preseason, but you, uh, look at look at the, his build right now. He clearly hit the weight room this offseason. Guys on the team have called him Ty Braun. <laughs> Uh, and as big as he is, he has slimmed down but put on muscle, if that makes sense. Yeah, and his upper body is really big. And his feet are moving a little bit better, too. That was a great help right there. And Caldwell did all he could, but still denied. Ahead to Lee. Lee bumped on the outside by Cummings. That's a cheapie. Yes, it we'll is. We'll take it. And it'll go to the line, so see if Kirk can hit some free throws. Dragons haven't been great from the line so far. Five of eight. And early going. Just Kirk's first trip to the line. You know, it's crazy. Kirk has no points and no assists right now. So Lee will go to the line and knock down the first one. You know, he, he last season, the very beginning of the year, his free throw shooting wasn't great, but as the season went on, he got clutch. It's almost like he would look at the clock and say, oh, it's time to start knocking some of these down. He makes both here in the early part of this game. Well, he, he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot, and he's going to get to the line a lot. So clean up there, getting some points that way. Cummins sporting the latest in headband style. The pass down low to Plowden. He finishes. Plowden did a good position there. Nothing Green could do once he got the block. Harper taking advantage of Cummings. Well, we said he can go to the line, and he's, this will be shots five and six for Harper from the line. And that was purely just the device to get to the line. I don't think he really thought he was going to make a shot out of that. No. And Harper, a little ginger getting up off the floor there. I don't know. First, it looked like he was looking for a contact, but he wasn't. He was just looking straight down. Bowling Green went to, to talk it out with their head coach, Michael Huger. And Coach Spiker is wondering why. <laughs> Looked like a time hey, out there. Hey, every advantage, every coach is going to take every advantage possible. On its way, good. So I think, what do you, X, what do you think of the new court, yeah. by the way? You like it? I kind of like it. I want to get up and I want to get up and see it from above, but I like the the way the dragon stands out a little bit more. The dragon's breath. They sort of made it sort of opaque before. It was sort of hard to see. Now it's yeah, it's much it's brighter. Light, it's clear. Yeah. It's a lighter wood color. Did you pick it out? I did not. Did you have swatches in your office? Do you have floor swatches in your office? No, but I wasn't part of that committee. But I do like it. I think it's a good job. Because Harper went out of the game. And he's actually behind the bench now, being worked on by. Drexel, somebody's live streaming the game. Fox from the three, it's no good. Long rebound picked up off the floor by Green and he is undercut by Plowden. What were you saying about live streaming? Uh, it was three gentlemen just walked past our broadcast location and appeared that they were using the, their telephone to stream the game or something like that. I don't know how they were able to walk through here. Our crack security usually keeps up. Oh, he's pointing them now. I think he's going to boot them. So Green's going to get two shots here with 424 to go in the first half. That first one snapped the twine as it went through. This will be foul shot number 14 of the first half for the Dragons. Right now they're 10 of 13 from the line. Next one's on its way. Tapped out by Bowling Green and controlled by Caldwell. Lobs it to the line, out to Turner. Turner puts it on the floor. Step back. Turner fires from three. It's no good. Miles with the rebound. Tyshawn Miles. Lee to Green, down to the left, low block. Austin. 
Now Kirk will reset it. Still 10 on the clock. They're really stepping out on Kirk Lee. He gets in the lane, the floater, good. Little teardrop floater from Kirk Lee. They did pretty much everything they could there to keep him out of the lane. Can't keep a good man down though. 33-27. Dragons the last five points. Extend that lead to six. Turner travels. And that'll take us to the under four timeout. Dragons a little distance. They're held up well, played a little defense. They have themselves a six point lead here at the three minute, eight second mark. We'll take the timeout. We're watching Drexel basketball on Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. Drexel is the modern American research university. We do translational research, we do cooperative education, we do urban extension. The place is just bursting with opportunity and as a result, it's a very, very special place full of great people who are doing amazing, amazing things. And the ethos of Drexel to learn by doing is really 100% compatible with what a comprehensive research university is and has to be. That experiential learning is essential and really differentiates our students from the pack. Research is really just about discovering new things, trying to create knowledge, uh, insight, innovation in all forms. We bring together students, faculty, and staff from across the university to pursue highly multidisciplinary projects. So that can be music and engineering. That can be robotics and dance performance. That can be material science and fashion design. The things that have happened here and the speed at which they've happened is a tribute to a community that will never rest on its laurels. Everything that I'm doing now is trying to make the world a better place. My mission is to change the world, but I'm gonna do it one student at a time, one innovation at a time, one class at a time. Every interaction, I want to make a difference in this world, and it's wonderful to be able to do that here at Drexel University. Back at the deck, watching and listening to Drexel basketball, brought to you by our friends at Independence Blue Cross, Live Fearless. IBX is always the sponsor of our halftime program. Zach Spiker following his team out on the floor to continue communicating this last moment instructions. Dragons with a six point lead. Kirk Lee across half court to Sammy. Tyshawn, Sam, Austin on the floor with him. We're familiar like that. Austin, baseline turns, blocked. And he is fouled. Is that the fry? Is that right? Janai nope. Gadsden. I thought they put number five up. I was like, I don't see a five out there. Five, two. That'll be it. Okay. So Austin will go back to the line. 14 already today, Rob. Make it 15. Next one's on its way. That's good as well. So that run is a 7-0 run as we speak. Bowling Green's going to help score this last two minutes. Fox trying to end that drought. It's in and out. Williams with a rebound. Lee into the lane, passes it out to Ty Sean. Ty, strong move. It falls for him. Showed some good hands there. Yeah. Two years ago, you wouldn't have thrown that pass to him. Unless you wanted to go out of bounds. I don't know if they want to throw it to him there either, but he, he took care of it. Good, good job and get on the board and Dragons with a 10 point lead. Fox wanted to get to the block, stop, kicks it back out to Turner, shoots the three, makes the three. It's a good thing Turner made the trip. He's got 12 out of their 30. Not good for us, of course. Well, you want to see a competitive game, they drop it off the tie, knocked out of his hands on the way up. 
turnover Drexel. What you don't want is them to get a little run going, get momentum going back on their side before the half. Caldwell will back it away from the arc. Steps inside of it, kicks it out to Fox. In the corner for three, it's no good. Weak side rebound tapped up was Mojica and Stretch fighting for the ball. They hit each other because they went down Yes, arc. they did. That's the Falcons ball. Get into Gadsden. Gadsden to Turner. He'll make the turn. Drives. Misses. Good put back though by Gadsden. He missed the bunny. And Sam Green's there to get the rebound for Drexel. Dragons fortunate there. Falcons had good position and a good offensive board. Just couldn't finish it. Shot is up. No good. Sammy fighting for it. Going to get the foul. And that will be two on Sammy. Fouls have been mounting up for the Dragons. They got three fouls on Doles. Two now on Green, Harper, and Mojica. Did I see that women's soccer got a win today? No, unfortunately, no. women's soccer uh, season ended last weekend. Okay, what was that? They, oh. were, they were in the semifinals of the CA and went up to Hofstra where they played a really good Northeastern team and, and fell 2 nothing. So unfortunately, post and NCAA tournament were dashed. That would have been fun. The NCAA tournament was supposed to be this weekend. We're already trying to plan where I was going to be. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have that problem. Looking at the Drexel bench, Troy Harper over at the end of the bench rolling his calf. He might have some cramp issues in game one here. Mojica to Green. Ty Shaw now Lee. Ooh, Ty with a, looks like an illegal pick right there to get away with. Sam Green puts it on the floor, drops it off for Ty, off the glass and good. Wow. That was a strong offensive move by Tyshawn Miles. And Mojica he trying would. to get the steal, picks up another foul. Ah, can't do that. Oh, no, he was fouled. Maybe you can do that. He's going to go to the line and shoot two here. That's daring, though, because you can't get Sammy in any f more foul trouble here. The Dragons are not deep tonight. And he's already got two. Just talked about that. Jeffrey Uju with that foul. Mohika, first one's up short. Shooter like Sam, normally not shorting him. Kind of had a quiet half for Mohika, but he's got six points and six boards. I wouldn't have guessed the six boards. Next one is up and good. Uh, we talked in the pregame about the energy that he brings to the floor. And the you know, he makes a contribution to the stat line in some way every game. Ten-point lead. If you can get a stop right here and go in a half with a ten-point lead, you've got to be pretty happy in game one. Thirteen seconds on the shot clock. About a five-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Caldwell to Turner. He puts it on the floor, gets in, scores it! Six seconds, five, Lee, pull up, uh, put back by Sam Green though, and the Dragons go to the half with that 10 point advantage that you were talking about Tubes. Wow, that was, the Falcons got caught looking there, everyone was looking up and Green just came in the right side and caught her off the rim and laid it up. You know, at the end of the half, people, people looking at the clock, you know, looking at the shot, looking at the clock. And Sam Green able to sneak in there before anybody can put a body on him and uh, finish off strong, finish the half off strong for the Drexel Dragons. Yeah, coach has got to be happy with that. And you take a look at this one, Tubes, and Sam came right off the right side, right there by the block. Nobody put a body on him, and bang, 10 point lead at half. 10 point lead at the half, so the season's starting strong for the Drexel Dragons. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit about how the Dragons got to this 10-point first half advantage. Time now for the Independence Blue Cross halftime report. Independence Blue Cross, a card that's accepted by the most doctors and hospitals in the region, the company that's been here for nearly 80 years. Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Get the power of independence at ibx.com. You're watching Drexel Dragons basketball on drexel.tv from Learfield Sports. Stepping into
to the unknown, it can be difficult to find the way. But with the compassion and security of Independence Blue Cross, obstacles become openings. As we have for nearly 80 years, we'll continue to light the way with the card accepted in all 50 states, giving you the power to shine forward to whatever awaits tomorrow. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. This staircase has been here for over 120 years. Every morning, I look at those stairs and think about all they've seen. Drexel granted his first graduate degree in 1927. Since then, countless future CEOs, astronauts, researchers, and industry leaders have made their way up and down these stairs. Our founder, Anthony Drexel, was someone who always looked towards the future. He founded a university for both men and women from all backgrounds to educate the leaders who will shape history. Being based in Philadelphia has presented us with a unique benefit. Our cooperative education program has allowed us to build a professional network that reaches every corner of the globe. Integrating experience into learning is just one of the ways Drexel has transformed the education process. This was the first university to require that all students have computers, the first to have a fully wireless campus. They even invented the barcode here. But it's not just about what we've done. Right now, with over 120 graduate programs, our academics touch almost every aspect of the professional world. And Drexel offers access that our founder could only dream of an education that truly fits every student's schedule. These halls continue to witness amazing breakthroughs with real-world impact. Autism treatments, nanotechnology, mobile applications that actually harness the power of music. Here, students learn how to apply their knowledge from expert faculty. We're building the next generation of leaders in professions that push us forward. These stairs are not just a path to classrooms and offices, their pathways to the future. Welcome back to the DAC for game one of the 17-18 season. Rob Brooks, Mike Tuberosa here with you during the Independence Blue Cross halftime report. And the Drexel Dragons enjoying a 10-point advantage here at the half. And Tubes, the, the method in which the, uh, the Dragons got out to the 10-point uh, the lead, uh, Bowling Green, you know, took their shots. And the Dragons played some pretty good defense and were able to hold on. No doubt. I, I think the thing that I'm most impressed with in the first half Bowling Green shot just 38% in the first half, and the Dragons are out rebounding by seven. But here's one guy the Dragons need to control, and that's Turner. Justin Turner kicks it out. They knock down a three right there. Here comes another one. Here's Turner in the corner. He's going to make the bomb right there. But some Dragon highlights. Austin Williams had a terrific first half. Sammy puts it up, but Austin there for the putback. Now here's Kirk Lee streaking down the floor. The miss. But Sammy Mohica with a putback, and one of the things the coach talked about was putbacks. And here, the shot at the end of the half by Sam Green to, to round out the first half. So the Dragons attacking the glass here in the first half. And uh, you look at the rebound advantage. Dragons with 22 rebounds in the first half. Bowling Green with just 15. Dragons with seven offensive rebounds in the first half to help this one out. And when you look at the seven offensive rebounds, four were by Williams, which we just... Saw some of those uh, highlights there, but it also led to a couple free throws. 
And when you look down at some of these numbers, 24 points in the paint and 12 of them are second chance points. And Dragons shooting 50% from the floor in the first half, holding their opponent to just 38. And they're not actually shooting the ball well or often from deep, which is one of the things they did a lot last year. They set the school record last year with threes and attempted threes. Not necessarily percentage, but those other ones. They're not forcing it tonight because they've been able to get to the hole. And Dragons, a decent job, 72% from the free throw line. They had 18 attempts from the line. They knocked down 13 of them. Meanwhile, Bowling Green only with nine trips to the line in the first half. The Dragons keeping their hands off the opponent. Yeah, they're doing a good job defensively inside too because um, Bowling Green isn't just relying on threes. They're inside, but as you said, the guys have been in much better... Oh, almost got hit <laughs> by a shirt there. <laughs> much better position than they were last year. You know, a lot of times last year they got caught flat-footed, and I feel like the defensive effort... Coach has got to be happy with that. I mean, you, you can just feel it, and when guys are playing D, it leads to the offense, and a, a really good opening first half. I don't think you could have asked for much more. Well, Kirk Lee played all 20 minutes in the first half. He was just one of six from the floor, finished up with four points. Uh, the stat line isn't great for Kirk Lee in the beginning, but yet he's sort of been in the middle of it all anyway. Yeah, and you know, he doesn't have, he only has one steal, but he caused a travel. He caused another steal down the other end. He's been active and he's been annoying. And I think that's part of the reason that the Dragons are playing so well in the first half. So really got to be happy with the effort so far. Uh, obviously, a long way to go. Got to probably contain Turner. Hopefully, he didn't knock down three more threes in the second half. Uh, but the Dragons were able to hold off the foul trouble that they had in the half, so. We will see, we will see how this one continues. The Falcons have made their way back from the locker room early in this one. Guess they feel they need to warm up a little bit more as it's pretty cold here in Philadelphia tonight. Really early, seven and a half minutes left when they made the, their visit to the court. Oh, well, that might be one of those, get out of here, I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe what I'm seeing out there. We'll take a timeout. We'll continue along here on the Independence Blue Cross Halftime Report. Rob Brooks here, Mike Tuberosa there. We are at the DAC, the Sam Cozen Court, the home of your Dragons. Where they enjoy a 10-point lead, 42-32. to 32. Watching Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. ask me, Coach, how do you stay so healthy? My answer is simple. I invest in my health. 
I exercise, I remain active, and I eat healthy. After years as a coach, and now in business, it just comes natural. Good evening and welcome. Back here at the deck as we continue along on the Independence Blue Cross Halftime Report. Opening day in college basketball for your Drexel Dragons. Uh, some other action going on. CAA, other CAA schools are in action as well. Time now for a Hahnemann University Hospital out-of-town scoreboard at Hahnemann University Hospital. Quality patient care is their number one priority. Hahnemann provides quality care and specialties including orthopedics, heart, cancer, minimally invasive surgery, primary care, and more. Offering advanced medical technologies and treatments, Hahnemann University Hospital is here to heal. For more information on quality care, visit HahnemannHospital.com. And Tubes, I understand Elon decided to take on the big boys in their first game out. How's that going for them? Uh, not so well. Uh, the Duke Blue Devils, fresh off signing the top recruit in the country today, or at least getting a verbal. They're up 54 to 25 on Elon early in the second half. Grayson Allen already with 19. Couple, it's hard to tell surprises early, but one score that looks like a surprise to me, the Delaware Blue Hens are playing Richmond tonight, and they lead at half, 49 to 20, leading by 29 points, and they had, I believe, three conference wins last year. Ryan Daly, local product, already has 12 for Delaware. Charleston at halftime struggling a little. They're only up 28-25 over Jimmy Patsos' Siena Saints. Siena coming off a loss in their exhibition game to Lemoyne College. Just want to throw that out there for you Lemoyne Dolphin fans listening. Hofstra 37, Army 36 at the half. Justin Wright Foreman, one of the top players in the CA, has nine points at half as Hofstra is clinging to a one-point lead. Towson also up by a point at half. They're leading Old Dominion 29-28. Earlier today, James Madison pummeled Bridgewater. Bridgewater's Division III school down in Virginia, 80-50. to Two games later on tonight, Northeastern and BU not in a bean pot hockey game but in a basketball game and william and mary will travel to high point for their first game of the season so mm -hmm. that's your caa scoreboard high points like a movie set that's all brand new buildings yeah. down there i'm not sure even sure if all of them are full buildings no all new buildings and then a big mall with nothing in it <laughs> yeah, how about that yeah we'll take one more time out we come back we have second half action for you between the falcons and the dragons drexel game number one of the season this is drexel dragons basketball Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. People are always asking me, Coach, how do you stay so healthy? My answer is simple. I invest in my health. I exercise, I remain active, and I eat healthy. After years as a coach, and now in business, it just comes naturally. Of course, it helps to know that Independence Blue Cross has had my back for over 30 years. With that kind of security, it's easy to age fairness. See what Independence can do for you. For more information, visit ibxmedicare.com. Falcons have the basketball to start the second half. Drexel with a 10-point advantage. Coke 
the handoff. Turner makes the turn, bounce pass. Underneath the Coke scores it. And they will draw first blood here in the second half. Really well drawn up play right there too. Mojica driving, finger roll, good! Down to the left block, Wiggins turns, fires, no good. Coke knocks it out of bounds and, oh, they're gonna say it's off Sam Green. One thing you've noticed right away, Rob, two possessions, the Falcons have gone inside immediately. They've gone right to Coke and they're trying to get it to Wiggins, going right inside. You throw it over the top to Wiggins. Fry's falling all over the place. Have you done that? <laughs> he slipped twice that possession. Turner's shot is good. I'll tell you, Sammy was right in his face. Not too much you can do about that. 44-36, your count. Sam Green once again for a moving screen. They've got him twice tonight doing that. Apparently you watched the video with Coach Spiker. Maybe Sam was thinking about calculus. We're a minute in. Dragons had a 10-point halftime lead. Caldwell spins. A lot of dribbling now Fry. Wiggins turns, baseline, off the glass and good. Lead down to six. Bowling Green got out of the locker room earlier. Clearly they had a mission. Harp down the lane, fouled on the floor though. They're gonna get Fry there. I think they're calling that on nope. Turner. Okay. Clearly I saw Fry hit him, but obviously Turner got him first. It's a group effort. Mm -hmm. Can't give them all a foul. Having yeah. a really hard time, these guys keeping Harper in front of them. Harper on the near side throws it in. That's in the hands of Green. To Lee. Now Harp gets in the pain. Good. Somehow got that to fall. He, he, wanted, he wanted contact on that. He wanted to go for one more. 46-38. Foul down low, they're gonna call a hold on Austin Williams. Zach Spiker lobbying for his team. Turner to the elbow, down the lane, off the glass and good. Not a high probability shot, but he's making it work for him right now. It's 46 to 40. We played two minutes here in the second half. It's definitely a different approach this half as Bowling Green continues to go inside and Harper continues to go inside. He'll advise that one, he misses. Bowling Green, the Falcons go the other way. Turner in the lane, misses, but he's fouled. Late one, they're gonna get that Austin. Yep, that's Austin again. Stretch. It looks like that's three on him. Let's see if Coach Spiker elects to sit him down for a little bit now. And you're going to get Tyshawn Miles up off the bench. You kind of feel the, the tide turning a little here. Not, not in a good way if you're a Dragon fan. Turner was one for two from the line in the first half. Makes the first. He's up to 19 now. And he just goes every time right to the basket. And he's been picking up the fouls. And the 10-point lead is now down to four. It can happen in a hurry. Lee, left around the screen, pulls up from the free throw line, no good. Wiggins all alone underneath. Fry, keeps the dribble alive, pulls up, free throw line, no good, it's short. Tapped out by Coke, saved by Coke. Good passing underneath, and there's going to be a foul. Looks like they're going to get green. Uh, slightly blocked out by the official, but it is green. Yeah, green landed right on top of him. Boy, this is an inspired group of Bowling Green players right now, and the, the foul trouble mounts as no, that's four on green. The Dragons have four on green, three on Williams, three on Doles. Doles is going to check in to spell green. 
right after this free throw. Shots up and no good off the back iron. Here you see great passing by the Falcons and Green tried to come over and help but landed on top of Wiggins but he did present the easy layup. Don't know if it was worth his fourth foul but it's going to be worth only one point on this trip if he can make this shot. And he does not. Still wasn't worth the fourth foul but yeah, at least he got no points out of it, right? The Dragons got to get something going offensively here. Haven't had much the last few minutes. Most of the offense this half has been Harper trying to take it to the hole. Doles to Miles. Back to Harp. Six seconds. He fires it up from deep. No good. It's a long shot. Rebounded by Wiggins. For what Troy brings to the team, he's not a great three-point shooter. That's probably not a shot that they wanted there. Wiggins gets it deep. Miles pushes him deeper. Nice defense by Ty. Right the ball. Yeah. Sammy from deep, good! Sammy with one to stop the bleeding. That is a big three right there. First of all, a great defensive play down here by Tyshawn Miles to, to get the ball back and they make him pay as offensive foul. Now all of a sudden the Dragons have some energy and yeah. some momentum. And again, it starts from, we talked about it before, it starts from the defensive end. You make a nice play, you get the ball, boom, three-pointer, come back, do it again. Now the lead seven, get a bucket here, you feel a lot like you've weathered the storm. Yeah. Because that definitely felt like it was a big storm coming. Tadas Karaninas in, Troy Harper to the bench. Yeah, it did, it did feel a little funky right there. And then you see Mojica knocking it down from three as he gets up to 12 points. Doles, now Lee. As we approach the 16 minute mark, 49-42, Lee. Stopped before he could get all the way. Nice pass to Mojica. Now they kick it out to Cadarinas from three. It's good. The extra pass there by Mojica. Could have gone right up. Unselfishly kicks it to the rookie who knocks down his first career three. And he's, he's, uh, the Dragons weathered the storm here. It's back to 10. And Michael Huger has to take a timeout. A new timeout by Michael Huger. That's going to take us to our first media timeout. 15.56 remaining here in the second half of the game. It's a 10-point lead for Drexel, 52-42. You're listening to Drexel Basketball and watching us on Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. Stepping into the unknown, it can be difficult to find the way. But with the compassion and security of Independence Blue Cross, obstacles become openings. As we have for nearly 80 years, we'll continue to light the way with the card accepted in all 50 states, giving you the power to shine forward to whatever awaits tomorrow. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. What does it mean to be a CAA student athlete? It's passion. Commitment. Preparing for the real world. Discipline on the court and in the classroom. Accountability only for those who want it the most. CAA Hoops. Good, good crowd here at the DAC as we uh, play game number one of the season. And Drexel bringing some energy to the floor and Tubes, look at this one. Nice job by Kirk Lee finding Mojica. Doesn't go up, makes the extra pass to a wide open Kararinas. And, and just the unselfish play by both Kirk Lee and then the second pass by Mojica gives the Dragons a 10 point lead. Weathered the storm, forces the Falcons into calling timeout, and everything feels good again here in University. Gives the, the deck pack some reasons to smile out here. And, and selfish is one of the words that Coach Spiker used before the game. He wanted to see guys play unselfish basketball, make that extra pass. Yeah, it's not about just getting points, and you can see that tonight. We've we've seen the passes, and you have seen the defensive effort, and uh, you feel really good about the team when they're doing stuff like that. Good help right there as well. Coke comes away with it. Now the pass is stolen by Mojica. One on two. Does he have help? There's Doles. Now he'll wait for Kirk Lee to come down the floor and set up the offense. Smart move there to, to wait. Didn't have the numbers. No need to force it. 
He's yelling, shoot it from 30. Jeez. <laughs> well, you know, he's already knocked one down, so the fans get excited. He's supposed to know better, too. Falcone's a smarter fan than that. He Maybe. Has, he has his days. Three <laughs> seconds. Kick ball. And that's going to bail the Dragons out. Yeah, that's going to set the clock back to 20 seconds. Yeah, that's a new rule this year. In the past, it was, in the past, it was 15. For some reason, we have a media timeout here, but I don't believe this should be a media timeout because that last time I was called within 1556. But it was the first. Extra, that's it was why. that extra. It's the yeah. first one that's called by either team. So yeah. now we have the Forgot first one that. below 15. Yeah. You know what? Preseason is not just for the players; it's for the broadcasters yeah. too. Tubes. We're gonna get we're gonna get Tubes back in, in track. He's been watching the rules videos, but not the clock videos. Yeah, well, because their their coach went over. It's like, why are we doing that? And like, that's why. Well, <laughs> we got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it as well. Ten point game for your Drexel Dragons. 52-42. Drexel Dragons basketball and DrexelDragons.tv from Learfield Sports. Home is more than a place. It's a feeling. It's pushing yourself to the top of the hill before your morning commute. It's the lure of your secret fishing spot. It's having a big team meeting after a day at the office. At Independence Blue Cross, we know the feeling because your hometown is our hometown too. For nearly 80 years, Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Back at the deck, Rob Brooks, Mike Tuberosa, 15-13 to go, and it's a 10-point lead for Drexel. That's what it was at the half. The Falcons got it down to four, but then the Dragons put a little pressure on them and got the lead back out to 10. And Drexel basketball as you resume action here. Samuel Hika waiting to take the ball from the official. And here we go. Clock error. So they're resetting the clock to 15, 12. For some reason it went two ticks before the ball went bounce. Mojica will start it again to Katarinas once more. Now Kirk Lee has it, the Drexel playmaker. It's Tadas, Tadas from three, it's no good. Good block out by Turner. Ooh. Wow, that was a really good block out. And I guess they're saying he held him? Yeah, they're saying they're, they gave the indication of a hold. So that's just the third team foul on the guest Falcons. So Drex will be inbounding from the baseline. Coach Huber not happy over there. Can't really blame him. We're going to say Kirkley stepped on the sideline and he made his turn there as he curled. That smells like a makeup. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell down here. I mean, obviously. We're we slightly screened out from there. Yeah. Doc Zilmer sitting down the line there obscures our view a little bit, and a turnover by the Bowling Green Falcons. We'll give it right back. I don't know if Doc is actually obscuring our view, but his head is right, uh, right in line, so we'll give him a shout. Doc now sits courtside. Enjoy the Dragons games. So we got Harper back in for Doles. Katarinas, Tyshawn, Sammy. Another and illegal offensive screen. foul, yeah. With Tyshawn Miles for that one. I think he got a little wide there. He is a little wide. Yeah, he is. He's a big boy. You know, if they, if they, as long as if it's within your hip perimeter, that's one thing. If they give him shoulder, that's a really wide screen that he's <laughs> allowed to set. Turner to the elbow, kicks it out to the wing. Now back down, and we have three to get Ty. No? Yeah, it was yeah, Ty. Ty. He had his hands on his back there. Gave him the arm bar. 
after. All of a sudden, the Dragons, six fouls, not even six minutes in, so the Falcons look like they're going to be going to the line a lot this half. No, they didn't go to the line a lot in the first half. No, so they didn't. So the basketball guys playing, evening things up. Oh, we're getting a lot of fouls here. Did they get tied us on that one? Yes, they did. Pretty much the same call they just gave on Ty. Well, that's the seventh on Drexel now. So we're in the one and one. Now, here's what we got to get to the level of. The Bowling Green radio guy, look at the sneakers he's got on. He's got on orange and white Bowling Green sneakers. Like, not that I'd wear sneakers, but how do we get down like that? Uh, we, we don't have those fancy colored sneakers there. You know, blue and gold. Wiggins makes the first, so he'll get another one. And if I ever had orange sneakers on, you know how much garbage I'd take from the people around here? That's appropriate. Just because you got your undergrad degree there doesn't mean you have to carry it around your whole life. Well, that's, why I don't, that's why I don't wear sneakers like that. Next one's up. Well, you missed it. Oh. They're saying Tadas left early, so give him another shot. 52-43. Looking with a deep breath. Makes it good, makes it count. 52 to 44. And, turnover. wow, a turnover. Aggressive play by Roderick Caldwell. Creates a turnover. We'll have Austin one. Williams gonna check back in and Taras Cararinas goes to the bench for Drexel. They throw it over the top to get it into Plowden. And now Turner to Caldwell. Wiggins. Back up top to Turner. Turner likes to shoot. And he'll pass it up to Fry. Fry is going to shoot a bomb. It's good. A good two to three feet beyond the arc was he. Now 52 to 47. Five point game. Dragon's offense been quiet the last few minutes between all the fouls. They're going to call a charge on Harper. The energy has really switched on the Dragons right now. Boy, the fouls are just mounting to the 8-3 to three this half on the fouls. You've got to think at some point there will be a reckoning. Take a moment to thank our friends downstairs at Landmark Americana. Hosted us for the kickoff breakfast a couple days ago. So feeding the folks upstairs in the president's room. You guys have a good time at the breakfast? Yes, we did. They even had something that I could eat. How often does that happen? Caldwell from deep. Good. Whew. Wow. Two-point well, game. When we talk about weather and the storm, well, that must have been just the eye because it's 52-50, and Bowling Green has the momentum, and the Dragons have to call time out here. Yeah, there was, uh, you know, there were some clouds that rolled through. It got clear again, but the clouds are back. Drexel's lead has dissipated to just two now. And Tubes? Wow, well, it's it just the whole momentum. The fouls started that way, and then they made a few shots. Yeah, and they've really, started, they really heated up here in the second half from deep. Yeah, so Fry made one as well as Caldwell, so Dragon's comfortable lead is not there anymore, and we still have a ton of time. 13.28 to go here in the game. And the Bowling Green Falcons have made themselves at home here at the DAC. Yeah, they have. They really uh, enjoyed the shooting, and you'll see it here. Turner this kicks it out, and Caldwell knocks it down. Yeah. Turner set up the last two threes, and he was the guy that was taking all the shots in the first half. Dragons have to help go help over there. And sure enough, the, the help didn't work, and two threes, and we got a one-possession game. Mojica, the energy man, gets to Austin Williams. Williams been on the bench with three personals. Rejoins the action. They hedge nicely on Lee. He keeps his dribble, loses his footing though. Fry kicks it out. Kirk Lee with a chance to pick it up. Now Fry on the ground, kicks it out to Turner. And they're breaking. Shovels it over to Wiggins and Wiggins jams it home. It is a tie game, 52 apiece, 12.50 to go here at the dash. That's a 10-0 run over the last minute, 24. And Plowden. It's called the obstruction. First foul in quite some time for the Falcons. 
Just their fourth of the half, though, so no shots coming as you see the easy dunk off the Drexel turnover. They did a good, great job of converting on that fast break. Now Drexel, see if they can stop the bleeding here. Gave up their 10-point lead. Lee with a lot of dribbling there. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Lee still dribbling, goes right around the screen, fires it, no good. Long rebound, Turner, and it's going to be off of Bowling Green. It's going to be Drexel basketball. Good hustle again by Tyshawn Miles, playing, playing much more inspired than he, than he was in the exhibitions and scrimmages. Jarvis Doles in, Tyshawn Miles out. And look at Coach Hugo over here, just get, he's not happy, and he's getting all over. And our shot clock guy, <laughs> Bernard Purnell. <laughs> he's, now been, he's now been directed to get back in the box, and he is screaming about the fact that he is just inside it. He is standing his ground. Oh, yeah. We're approaching the 12 minute, the under 12 timeout. I think he might use that to get his money's worth with these officials. Mojica picks up his dribble, gets it out to Lee. Lee, 15 seconds on the shot clock. And he'll back it out. Stretch. Too far away from the bucket to do anything. Now Mojica, eight seconds on the shot clock. Sammy pulls up from deep. It's no good. Tapped around. Run down by Austin Williams. And Stretch gets to Harp. That's not the possession the Dragons wanted, but it was good hustle. Dole steps back behind the arc, shoots it, no good. And Bowling Green is on the move again. Fry down the left side, the near side. Goes baseline, drops it off for Wiggins. Wiggins with a foul, doesn't and complete that, it. If that's on Austin, that's four. And it's good, they call that on John Dole. his fourth, but uh, that could have gone got, either way. Somebody's got to have four. You'd rather it be yeah, rather the freshman than the, than the senior. So 11.36 to go here in the tie game. Free throws coming when we come back to action here at the deck. 52 apiece. Watch from Drexel Basketball and DrexelDragons.tv from Learfield Sports. Bobby Broyles along with Rob Washburn. People are always asking me, Coach, how do you stay so healthy? My answer is simple. I invest in my health. I exercise, I remain active, and I eat healthy. After years as a coach, and now in business, it just comes naturally. Of course, it helps to know that Independence Blue Cross has had my back for over 30 years. With that kind of security, it's easy to age fearless. See what Independence can do for you. For more information, visit ibxmedicare.com. We come back to a tie game with 11.36 in tubes. The, the Bowling Green Falcons have just been churning and churning here in the second half, and the momentum, for the most part, has been theirs for the last five minutes. Yeah, they've done a pretty good job on the defensive end. And here you see a long three-pointer to start the run, and then the dunk by Wiggins. And one more three. Another three. That yeah. one earlier. Yeah, and tied this one up. Yeah, they get 10-0 run. Tied the game up at 52. Now Wiggins will be at the line with a chance to break the tie. Imagine Wiggins with 12 points already on three of five shooting from the floor, six of eight from the free throw line. One of the uh, one of the keys to this game, when you look inside the numbers, is Drexel's two starting guards, Kirk Lee and Troy Harper, each one of eight tonight. So a combined two for 16 and an 0 for five from three. I think Bowling Green has done a very very nice job on Kirk Lee. I, I think they watched a lot of tape on him because they've done a really good job at containing him and not ever letting him get free. So Wiggins to break the tie, he does. Fifty-three, fifty-two. Dragons have gone scoreless, Rob, for the last 4.23. With that media timeout, about eight minutes of real life without seeing the ball go through the bucket for the Dragons. They're down two. 
After enjoying a 10-point halftime lead, they're down two with 11 and a half remaining in the game. Harper on the Dragon's breath. Kicks it left for Williams. Stretch all alone out there. Sammy tried to get it down to Stretch. Couldn't. Seven seconds on the shot clock. They throw it down low for Stretch. He's double teamed. He fires it across court and out of bounds. Tried to pass it out of the double team. And the ball was too hot and too low. And Drexel turns it over down two. Offense getting a little stale right now. Good defense by the Falcons. They've really turned up the intensity this half. Turner takes it all the way to the glass. And right by Mojica there. 56-52. 14-0 run. Wow. Lee in the lane, loops it out to the corner. Now Hart puts it on the floor all the way across the rim. Misses the shot. That was wild and out of control. Williams picks it up off the floor, though. Good hustle. See Mojica and Williams both going after it hard. Kirk trying to create an opening. He gets in the lane. It's tapped out from behind him and out of bounds off Kirk Lee. We haven't seen Kirk struggle like this. They're, they didn't have many games like this last season. And Kirk Lee is one of eight from the floor today. And Tyshawn Miles over there rolling his right hamstring. And now Mike Westford over there walking Troy Harper Jr. off the floor. Meanwhile, take a look at this one, Tubes. Yep. Went right by Sammy, and the help didn't come quick enough by Austin. He hedged, but it wasn't a great hedge. Way too easy. Yep. Turner, to the top of the circle, pulls up and knocks it down. I was going to say, that was not a good shot off the dribble, but it went in, so. Wow. Stretches their lead to seven. 17-0 run. Made their last five. Sammy misses, mm -hmm. and it looks like the Dragons are starting to press a little bit. It's like a lid on this end, basket down this end. Just can't make a shot right now. Got to get a stop, too. Like, that's way too easy as well. Fly going coast to coast on them, and Coach Spiker forced to call a timeout right there. They've made their last six shots, and the run is 19. And it's, it, you know, I, funny isn't the right word, but... Coach Spiker trying to be relentlessly positive as he welcomes his team back to the bench. I mean, a 17-0 run, uh, two really easy baskets, balls taken right to the front of the rim. Uh, that would be, for many coaches, an occasion to begin the hysterics and the screaming. But Coach Spiker keeps his cool, stays relentlessly positive, and brings his team in, huddles them up, and he's going to try to get them refocused again now. Yeah, we're going to have to do something. The offense just isn't there this half. 4 of 13 shooting, and and the defense isn't there either. I mean, you look at the other end. We talked so much about how well the defense played in the first half. Bowling Green's missed three shots in 10 minutes and four seconds. Wow. When you're hot, you're hot. Yeah, made all three threes, and 6-0-3 to draw out the Dragons are in right now. That's a long time for a team that we're used to seeing score. You know, you might... No matter what you thought about last year's team and how they played, they could score. And we think this year's team is going to score even more. But right now, we are in a drought. You know what, Tubes? We've got to thank our friends at the Sinesta Hotel down at 18th and Market Street. Uh, for years, they've talked about the art bar, art-infused cocktails, art-inspired cocktails. We've never made it. You're going to turn 50 this year. We put that out there to the whole world. Thanks. And it might be a good night to go check them out. Might go, go see our friends at the Sinesta. Yeah, maybe get a room that night, too, probably. Huh? I can talk to Jen about that. <laughs> we spend enough time together on the road. I'm not sure we need one more night. No. But, you know, yeah. that's what you want for your 50th. But that, that's a nice place, though. That's where I had to tell my friends stay last year when they came to town. And they raved about it. Well, Kirk Lee with the basketball to begin the offense for the Drexel Dragons. They are down 61-52. Sam Green back in. Tadis Katarinas on the floor. Got a lot of three-point shooters out here, but gonna have to get one. Look yeah. at the defense they're playing on Kirk. They just won't let him get open. Three, two, shots up, and no good. Sammy attempts to put back, doesn't get it. And Bowling Green comes away. Their empty possession for Drexel. In the corner from deep, it's called well, he misses. Wiggins 
knocks it out of bounds. Well, let's see if the Dragons get some offense this time. Look at Caldwell staying with Lee all the way up the floor. They're not going to give him a moment to breathe, it seems. Good screen there by Williams trying to free up Lee. And it works. Goes in with the right hand, and the drought ends, or at least is temporary ended. And it's big that he went in with the right hand there. Yeah, that was really the only way he could go. Uh, Bowling Green, like I said, they're doing a really nice job on the defensive end of Kirk Lee. And that's one of the adjustments the sophomore is going to have to make. He will be part of the game plan now more than ever. Fry thought about shooting. Gives it up to Turner. He will fire. It's no good. Green with a rebound. Well, he doesn't have any numbers here. Let's see what he does. Going to pull up from the elbow and no good, but he's fouled. Probably a little bell out there. Not necessarily that it wasn't a foul, but that's probably not the shot you want. There's nobody there to rebound. But... That being said, let's get Kirk to the line. And maybe heat him up a little here as the Dragons try to get back in this. Down by seven with 8.27 to play. Sell out crowd tonight, Rob. The official number just came in. It's 25.04. So the Dragons begin 17-18 with a sellout. That's nice. That's, that's the house plus four. So the fire marshal must be away. <laughs> Actually, now with the additions, I have to look at what we officially call it now as Kirk knocks down a pair. I think I'd know that after all these years, but we've made so many adjustments to this building since I've been here. So many <laughs> improvements. Uh, the, the improvements are tremendous. You can't see them all from television from, the, from camera one, but the president's suite, the ticket office, the whole lobby looks great when you enter off Lancaster Walk. Into the lane, Turner, fade away, good. That's a tough mid-range jumper there by Turner. He's a pretty good looking player, as he has 25 points, 27 points and seven assists. Wow, where did that come from? A red shirt freshman, 6'4", 190 pounds. Turns, baseline is stretch, and he finishes. Boy, that's a good looking move. I think even he was surprised how open he was when he turned baseline on that. Well, you know what he showed there, too, some versatility went left. He's been going right the whole time. Bowling Green D overplayed him. He just slid on the left side for his seventh consecutive bucket. He's seven for seven from the floor. But you're going to have to make a stop if you're going to want to win this. And Caldwell makes that shot probably a degree of difficulty of six. Taras, shot fake, gives it up. Lee. Whoa, a little high there. Double team on Austin. Mojica is able to get into the lane. Finger roll, no good, Got but he's hit. fouled. Good take by Mojica. Couldn't get it to finish, but so they're going to put that one on Coke. It'll be his third and the team's fifth. So Sammy Mojica going aggressive to the basket tubes doesn't score it, but he's going to get to the line anyway. Yeah, it was, it was a nice play by him because he got the kick, got the double team off of Austin and just couldn't finish, but he did get hit on the right wrist going up. So when he, Mojica comes back, he'll look for a couple more points with the Dragons trail by seven. 65-58 your score with 6.55 to go. You're watching Drexel Dragons basketball on Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. Home is more than a place, it's a feeling. It's pushing yourself to the top of the hill before your morning commute. It's the lure of your secret fishing spot. It's having a big team meeting after a day at the office. At Independent Blue Cross, we know the feeling because your hometown is our hometown too. For nearly 80 years, Independence Blue Cross, live fearless.
Beer Drexel Dragons. They are trailing 65-58 with Sammy Mojica. The chance to bring him closer from the free throw line. Sammy's been quiet this half as he has to score after a 12-point first half. And Sammy knocks down the first. So he's up to 13. And with that point right there, Sammy Mojica now with 800 career points at Drexel. Sammy's next one is good as well. And Dragon shot 50% from the floor in the first half. The second half, they are just 6 of 16. That's 37.5%. And look at the other side. 70.6% for Bowling Green. 12 of 17. That is ridiculously high. You can win some games like that. Turner in the lane runs through. That was like a triple jump, but he got to the, to the rim and scored it. Makes it a seven-point game. A hop, step, and a jump there. Lee falling down, tries to kick it out. Hustle by Austin Williams. They tie it up on the floor and jump ball. In the alternate possession, it's going to stay Drexel away. Saw three of the guys on the floor there saving possession. Good to see. Those are the little things that I know Coach watches on the tape because we talk about it and he'll show me clips of things that you know, we need to do that and we don't need to do this. And that was definitely something we need to do and with uh, the whole team diving to the floor, get the ball, the Dragons get the possession and they're gonna get a new shot clock. That's the referees were just discussing. That's what they conferred about. 6.17 to go here in the game. The Dragons down seven. Kirk Lee, the left elbow, pulls up, makes the little lefty floater. The lane just opened for him. Everybody seems to go by, and all of a sudden, we talked about Kirk not having many points. He's all of a sudden up to 10. Made his last two, four or four from the line. You know, last season he was good for almost 15 points a game. Lee on Caldwell. Now he kicks it out to Turner. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Turner between two defenders, stolen by Kirk Lee. Lee out in front. With Snowden behind him, Cloudin behind him. Foul. Yeah, Kirk Willis right there. He wasn't going to beat him. So he drew the foul. Kept him comfortably close. Yep, exactly. And just kind of slowed up, let him hit him. And Lee will go to the line. Kirk Lee with a great defensive play on one end. Now a chance to bring the Dragons too closer on the other. The lefty's first one is no good. Take a look at that play once again. There's the steal. He steps in tubes. Yep, and there he is. Kind of lulled the defender in him. He did a good job with that because he wasn't going to be able to break away from the defense. And he makes the second one. Troy Hopper jumps off off the bench. Sam Green goes and sits down. Austin, Troy, Sammy, Kirk. And Tadas, your Drexel five. Hey, yeah, Troy's, uh, Troy's done a good job of getting to the basket tonight, but he's just one of nine. We'll need a little more production out of him. Fry from three, it's good. Harp a little slow to catch up to him. I was just going to say he's going to have to do something on the defensive end as Fry goes right over him for a three. Lee out to Harper, and he kicks it over to Mojica. Troy was stretching his calf while he was on the bench, was rolling it earlier. Kirk Lee right down the lane, kicks it out to Harper. The ball's long. Fox with the rebound. Under five minutes to go here. It's a, the shot you want Troy to be able to make. I said he's not a great three-point shooter, but he was wide open right there, and it was a really good find by Kirk. A force. Good rebound by Sammy. And Lee, one on three, kicks it out to Mojica. Mojica in the paint, misses. Oh, it was too hard. He thought he was going to get the contact foul. And Dragons down seven. Possession will probably take us close to the four-minute mark. Unless, of course, Fry wants to shoot it now. Top of the key, it's in and out. Tapped out. Katarinas picks it up off the floor. Now gives it to Kirk Lee. Dragons were lucky there. He was wide open. Lee has it blocked. 
And out of bounds, it's going to be Falcon basketball. Sam Green jumps up off the bench. Troy Harper will sit down. Harper looks like he's, like he might be out of gas here. Like his adrenaline may have gotten the better of him in this game. I think he's a little out of gas. He's also a little disappointed. Like he hasn't been able to make shots he normally does. He's just one of ten tonight. The Dragons have a heck of a team sitting over on the bench with Isabel, Overton, now Harp, and Firepower. Not in this game. Caldwell, the bounce pass ahead. And very fortunate right there. Fry dribbled it off his knee after he had beaten Doles to baseline. So he either had a layup or he had a guy for a dunk, and instead it went off his knee. And takes us to our final media timeout with 3.47 to go in this contest. The Dragons are down 7, 70, 63, your score. We'll be back for the stretch run in just a moment. You're watching Drexel Dragons basketball. You're on Drexel Dragons TV from Learfield Sports. Denise Dillon and the Drexel Dragons will go dancing. of the 2013 Women's Justin Turner's had himself a heck of a game. Yeah, he's been able to hit a three, drive to the lane, and uh, Turner, we, that's a shot I said, I don't think that was a great shot coming off the dribble, but you know, he squares up, knocks it down, and I mean, Turner has been a one-man wrecking crew for Bowling Green. He's got 29 points tonight on 11 of 16 shooting and a couple pretty easy layups right there. 29 points, seven assists for the Falcons who are holding on to a seven-point lead. Just under four to play here. Fox, Wiggins, Turner, Fry, and Caldwell are the Falcon Five. Here's your deck pack. And Santa hanging out. Right. Sheridan University City, proud sponsor of your Drexel Dragons. Right here on campus. No more convenient place to stay. You're visiting your your son or daughter at school in the Sheridan University City. That's where the Falcons are staying tonight. You can walk home after this one. Most of their staff actually walked over today. 324 to go, seven seconds on the shot clock. Down low to Austin Williams. He stopped, double team, tried to go behind his back. Kicks it out to Lee, he shoots it, misses. Rebound, fought for and held, and now he traveled against Fry, so it's going to stay Drexel basketball. Falcons fighting among themselves. Good hustle. Didn't realize that they're the same team, and Dragons got lucky there. Had to force a shot up. We'll get a new possession, down seven. Still three minutes to play. A lot of time still. Mojica from deep, good. Used to seeing that over the years. Mojica with a good looking three right there. Squared his feet. Brought the Drexel within two possessions. 17 points for Mojica. A quiet 17 for Sammy. Wiggins wants it on the block, gets it, turns baseline. Reverse, misses. Austin Williams with some great defense down there. Yeah. Get defense and then gets the ball right back. Lee off the glass, misses. Austin Williams on the ground, fighting for it and in the alternate possession will go the other way. Boy, I tell you what, both teams are getting after tonight. This doesn't look like an early season game. You know, both teams really getting into it. I think both teams coming off years that they aren't used to. Bowling Green, pretty good program. Only had 13 wins last year. Drexel only had nine. 
going to start the year with a W. And Bowling Green coming on the road thinking they can get one here. Two twenty to go. Drexel down four. Turner makes the turn, drives, fouled on his way in. I'm going to say Doles. Jarvis Doles. And that will close the book on his first game as a Drexel Dragon, I believe, yes? Yep, that's five on him, so Doles will exit with three points. Probably playing a lot more minutes than anybody would have thought two weeks ago. Yeah, he was in double figures in minutes his first night as a Dragon. So that is way more than 10 pounds the Dragon, so we'll get two shots. So the Dragon's huddling up right now, trying to figure out how to rebound from this foul right here. Ooh, that was, he said he used his arm, but. Yeah, the, the signal was that he used the forearm, but. I mean, he he like might have got him really early, but when he lost control of the ball, that was pretty much all on him. You can see why Doles is not happy. So two shots coming. Still just a four point game. The one man wrecking crew, Turner. He's only three of four from the line tonight. 11 of 16 from the floor, misses the first. You know what Justin Turner's career high was coming into tonight? What? 10. He's triple that. <laughs> he only had four attempts from the free throw line. I only played in four games last year, let's be fair. But it's crazy to have a career high at 10, and then it goes from 10 to 30. It's like your career high in Russian is 25, and then you get 190. Tadas, cross court, picked off by Turner. One up versus the Dragons, layup is good. 73-66, under two minutes to go here, Lee. To Green, Green puts it on the floor, gets in, floater is good. We haven't seen that move from him. Sam Green. Now Coach Spiker wants the Dragons to press a little bit. Only Kirk Lee responded to the call though. Gonna have to get some stops here obviously and it hasn't been easy the second half for the Dragons. Is Bowling Green shooting 65% this half. Turner, bowling his way in, thrown out of bounds by Austin Williams. Boy, that's a tough cover for Austin there. That guy's pretty quick, and Austin stayed back and swatted that away. Katarinas out, Harper in. Caldwell over the top to Turner. Two seconds, foul. one. Just barely hit the rim and was that Williams who picked up that rebound there? Austin Williams, yes. Oh, that's him. That's a double-double. 18 and 10. One minute to go here. The Dragons down five. The three from Green, no good. Rebound by Williams. Williams to Harper. Harper going to drive it in. Throws it up over the rim. Looks like Troy Harper is going to go to the line and shoot two here. They calling that a fry. Fry looks like, what did I do? He's looking around and He's trying like, to find somebody to console him. He's like, really? That guy had no intention of making a basket. He really didn't. He just kind of threw it up there. Tyler, your dad is disappointed in you. Be better. I don't know what to say. It's a tough crowd right now. Day one, and some of these fans are really hungry for a win. The Dragons down five. If Harper could make these two, make it a one-possession game. That one's long. Here, here's the foul. You see Harper go to the basket. Wow. Yeah, that's no wonder why Fry yeah. got, he didn't even, he never actually touched him. His arms were down to his side, and he missed him with the hip. Yeah, he wanted to throw, he didn't, I guess he didn't want to throw Wiggins under the bus though, did he? Oh, One of two there. Wow, he really. <laughs> Dragons, full court pressure. They got the trap going in the corner, and Caldwell has to call a timeout. 50 and 7 10 seconds remaining here. And Drexel needs to create some turnovers. Yes, they do. Two possession game. You don't have to foul right now, but you have to have a stop. Now, any, any foul results in two shots. Yeah, and a bucket makes it a two possession game, and it could be a six point game. So you really 
got him. This is a really big defensive stand if the Dragons are going to win the home opener. I'm really impressed with the crowd too, Rob. They've, they've stuck around tonight. I mean, sometimes the kids sneak out of here a little early on a Friday night, but not tonight. The, the student section is full. You know what? Nobody's in a rush to get out there into that wind. Yeah, <laughs> it is a whole lot warmer in here. Remember back in the old days when it would have been steaming hot in here? Yeah. Air condition's nice, isn't it? Wiggins to Fox. Now Caldwell. Caldwell bringing it up the floor. And Kirk Lee fouls him under direction from Coach Zach Spiker. And Kirk, just his first foul, so he's one of the safe guys to foul. That's there. Roderick Caldwell, 50 of 71 from the free throw line. That's 70%. Don't really have much choice at this point. If you're going to follow, you have to probably follow the first guy with only 45 seconds to go. So Kirk fouled Caldwell, and Caldwell makes the first. Still two possessions. Five-point game, 69, 74. Misses the second. We have to go quick here. Let's see if Hopper goes right to the basket. Gives it to Kirk. Lee to the right. Screened out. Tries to pass it across court. It's stolen. Caldwell picks it up off the floor. The Dragons have to foul. Yeah, that was just a bad pass right there. And Sam Green picks up the foul, and that will be number five on Green. And Zach Spiker calling his players over. And, you know, good move by the, by the Falcons in that double team two much taller players. He was sort of lost in the trees there was Kirk Lee. Couldn't really see the court. Now he kind of got caught right there and got up off his feet and tried to make something happen. And unfortunately what happened wasn't good. Nope. The Dragons have a pretty steep hill to climb here. Down five, 30 seconds to play. Caldwell back to the line. One thing to know, Rob, Austin Williams tonight, 18 points, 12 rebounds. That's his third double-double and a career high in points. That one goes down. And he also tied his career high in rebounds. I don't think that's going to be his career high for much longer, though. I'll tell you what, Austin played really well tonight when he was in the game. Stretch's going to have some nights in the league. Dragons down seven now, and here comes Harper. Drops it off for Lee. Shot clock and the game clock almost the same. Lee gets away with a double dribble there. Now Mojica, no urgency necessary. Dragons have to follow there, and that may do it. Fry's going to go to the line. Good effort tonight by the Dragons, but not enough. Disappointing as well because they played really well in the first half, especially on the defensive end. And they're going to still come up with an L. There's no moral victories in Division One basketball. No, you either do or do not. Yeah. And this night, the Dragons will not, barring a miracle. Fry makes the second. 77-69, Lee from deep, in and out. It's been the kind of late night it's been for Kirk Lee. And now a foul is called, so Turner's gonna get a chance to shoot two more. Sammy a little disappointed going over to talk to Coach Spiker. Yep, yeah, you know, Sammy's starting to get that disappointed look, and I think that's one of the things Coach is saying, like, gotta stay up, you're one of our seniors. You gotta Pretty be good up. game for Sammy tonight, too. He just, at the end there, didn't make a shot. I think he's just disappointed knowing they had a chance to pull out the win. Turner misses. Yeah, he cooled off, but just not soon enough. Harp trying to bring it just a little bit closer. Misses, and Bowling Green gets the rebound. An appropriate way to end this game. 78-69 is your final. The Drexel Dragons unable to get it done in game one. 
They showed flashes of brilliance. And in the end, Bowling Green, and especially the play of Justin Turner, just a little bit too much for the Drexel Dragons here tonight. Turner finishes the game, plays 39 minutes, 12 of 19 shooting, and 33 points. For a career high of 10 coming into this game. Only played in four games last season, but he starts the season in a hot, hot way and sends the Dragons down to defeat. Final score, 78-69. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll show you how it got to be that way. You're watching Drexel Dragons basketball on DrexelDragons.tv from Learfield Sports. Pushing yourself to the top of the hill before your morning commute. It's the lure of your secret fishing spot. It's having a big team meeting after a day at the office. At Independent Blue Cross, we know the feeling because your hometown is our hometown too. For nearly 80 years, Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Welcome back to the deck. Rob Brooks here with you post game as the Dragons lose game number one of the season, 78-69 to the Bowling Green Falcons. This one started off well. As a matter of fact, the Dragons had a 10-point halftime lead, and a lot of that was due to the play of Austin Williams. Uh, Stretch just doing a great job here in, the, in this game, following up on shots. See the miss there? There's Stretch with another tip in. Katarinas down the stretch. Watch this move. Baseline all alone, makes the bucket with the right hand. But a 17-0 run, much of it fueled by the play of Turner. There's Stretch with a block. A 17-0 run by the Bowling Green Falcons, much of it fueled by the play of Justin Turner as he just came alive in this one. He wound up scoring 33 points in 39 minutes, 12 of 19 shooting, 4 of 7 from deep, and 5 of 8 from the free throw line. He also had 4 rebounds in this one, 7 assists, a block and two steals. So just a magnificent night for Justin Turner, and he helps drive his Bowling Green Falcons to a road win to start the season. You see this play make its way out. Caldwell on the wing. Back to Caldwell. Now up top, the drive, the kick out. Turner from the elbow. There was no place on the floor tonight where he could not knock a shot down. And uh, he is our player of the game here this evening, Justin Turner from the Bowling Green Falcons. Well, the bad news is the Dragons lost game number one of the season. The good news is they'll be back here on the Sam Cozen court on Monday. Monday they'll take on Arcadia, so a chance to pick up their first win on Monday. The Dragons can get their record back to even and uh, get a win. Take a quick look at some of the scores here. 18 points tonight for Austin Williams, 11 for Kirk Lee. 17 for Sammy Mojica on 6 of 13 shooting, including 2 of 5 from deep. Jarvis Doles and Tadis Katarinas each contribute 3 in their debut as Dragons. Tyshawn Miles with 4. And Troy Harper contributes 8. Sam Green rounds out the scoring with 5. And that is how this one ends. 
So until Monday night, be safe, enjoy yourself. I want to thank my partner, Mike Tuberosa, also our producer, Eric Weber. Thank you very much for spending your Friday evening with us here on Drexel Dragons TV. Until Monday, have a very good night, and we'll see you then right here on Drexel Dragons TV by Learfield Sports.